Hello everyone! Welcome back to Nuffy Cat! We're so glad that you can join us today. Today I want to talk about several factors that matter when it comes to deciding when to buy a stock. Now this particular area is going to have varied opinions. But you see this little fishy here wanting to buy into that stock? <laughs> a lot of us are learning how all this works. And they do vary by strategy. So somebody that is a scalp trader is going to be different than somebody who's a long-term investor. And there's going to be several different factors, although they're still going to have similarities too. And so my attempt in this discussion today is to go more into the similarities. Yes. First, let's see if somebody will play. Yes. <laughs> yes, you're going to buy into this stock? Are you going to buy in? Or is it irritating you? You're going to sell out. <laughs> you don't want to sell it just because you're irritated, by the way. <laughs> in real time, in real life, one of the things, this is, according, you remember that all this is, um, you know, not meant to be financial advice. This is my own opinion, and you're going to hear similar opinions to other people, from other people who do trading on a regular basis. But one of the important things is that you buy it more when it's near its all-time lows. And very importantly with that is that you want to know why it's there. Yeah, look at him sitting on that red market. Yeah, that would suggest that he might know why. He might know why that market, why that stock is so low. And he's going to make decisions about buying in based from that. It might be at all-time lows, for example, because it's about to go bankrupt. In which case, you don't want to touch it. It could potentially be up for possible delisting over the SEC. And that is also a time that you really don't want to be buying in. But otherwise, there's a lot of other times when they're near their all times lows because of FUD, because of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Maybe there's a negative earnings report, or which can be a factor in, in itself. But maybe they people are just have had some negative articles out, or for whatever reason, people are more afraid, and it's not necessarily a legit cause. Well, a lot of times when they're at those 52-week lows or at their all times lows or near, when they get down to that support line, a lot of times they'll start to bounce off of it. And so that's the type of time to buy in. Yeah, another, yeah, um, uh, this for me matters. Buying in when I do see, I, I like to sometimes, this is not always advisable by other financial people, but sometimes I like to buy in on earnings reports and they tend to crash right after but I don't buy in until I see recovery start. So it's got to get this green look started up and hopefully trailing up from here. That's the time to buy in. And I've had very good success myself personally with that particular strategy in that regard. Because if it's still falling and you're buying in and you're not seeing recovery, it may not, it may just get down farther. I've had that happen too. Especially before I knew more about buying stocks. Yeah, so that's one to be careful for. But also, when you see that, when you see the, the heavy falls in a stock, learn why, and then consider, consider buying in. If it's a sound company, if it's got a good proof of concept, that's when you want to buy in. And as I have mentioned, when it fits your strategy criteria, if you're a scalp trader, for example, and you've got a momentum play going, and it's early in the morning, and pre-market is going boing and going way up like that, that's a possible time. You know, a scalp trader is going to say, well, this was a little low, and now it's going up, and I'm going to get in right here. Somebody that's a long-term investor is going to be looking at that and making sure that that's just not a, you know, a low happening from a recent high that's being over-exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is very, very playful today. Yes. I want you to enjoy his playing too. <laughs> so, when you've studied things like the earnings reports, and you know the catalysts that are causing a stock to rise or fall, those really do matter, and you need to know those before you do buy in. 
even if it's redlining or at all time lows or if it's something for a person to consider scalp trading on, you need to know why it's doing what it's doing. You need to know those catalysts. And you also need to be familiar with the overall sector catalysts, such as if you're buying into a company that, let's say it's a propane company, but then the prices of propane and oil are at all time highs. Well, when those crash, that may get worse for that company, or it may be the reverse. You know, if that company is one that will benefit from lower prices, well, maybe it'll get better because of that crash. And you might need to know what's going on in the overall sector. Do you guys, some of you might remember when we had the, the Suez, I think it was the Suez Canal that was blocked for a little while. Remember how that happened where those ships were there? Well, that was definitely a catalyst in an overall sector. It affected, it affected actually in this case more than one sector. But the shipping industry had very hard times. The oil industry was having a very hard time. The price of oil had had gone crazy low, and then had then it was escalating crazily. So if you know the sector catalysts, you're going to be able to know. So here's an example. Right now we have issues about China. Uh, China has threatened. I think I've mentioned this on another video, but it has threatened to delist, or basically, it's telling one particular company that's in it to delist, and that is affecting all of the other Chinese companies. And that overall sector means that right now it's a, considered a little more risky to buy into a Chinese stock. Now, somebody that you know has confidence that that will change may still buy in, but. Those factors have to be considered when you're considering buying a stock. And then you also need to be familiar with the market at large. You need to be familiar with how the overall S&P and so forth, the Dow, the NASDAQ are doing that day. Let's say, for example, that we have a jobs report coming out and it had uh, negative numbers going on. Maybe, maybe too many people were quitting their jobs. Maybe the labor market had a different than expected um, you know, information. Maybe the inflation data has come out and the inflation's worse than people thought. Well, that will affect overall plays. And during that time, when you're seeing overall market catalysts, sometimes for somebody like me that can tend to go into earnings plays, um, that, that's a detriment. And I won't even use that strategy during that time when the overall sector is red. Another important thing is that you know you need to also be familiar with the entry and exit plan that you're going to use. Yes, and this time this little house is a good entry and exit example. <laughs> you need to have that preset in your mind and when it meets the criteria for that. That's when you buy in. You don't chase stocks. You let ch stocks chase you just like you don't chase money. Money can chase you. And then when you've back tested your strategy, that means doing things with paper money, paper trades, and testing it out and seeing how it works. That can make a very big difference in the result that you have too. If you have a strategy you're wanting to try and you haven't tested it and you're using it with real money, that can be detrimental because you may not know all the factors involved with that strategy. And it can really hurt you. What if that strategy isn't your style? What if you're a scalp trader and you have a trait, for example, of selling out before you would with a, should with a long-term investment? Then you want to be careful about that. You need that strategy tested out and you need to know where it's going to take you first. So that's why you backtest it and you, pay, and you paper trade it. And then another, another factor is to look for recent high volumes. Whether it's selling or buying... You want to pay attention to that. If, I, if I'm seeing high volumes in buying, I'm less likely to buy in in real life. But if you're trying to do a scalp trade, you can potentially get into that. If it's at an all-time low and I'm seeing high volume start, that might be a good time to buy in. If you're looking at a stock and it's, a, and it's got very large volumes of sell-off, Get your eyes on that stock, especially if it's a sound company that's got a, a proven concept, especially if it's also had good earnings report and it has a lot of potential. Well, there can be FUD around the market. Sometimes things will even be deliberately manipulated and will be you know, strategically lowered or having articles about it so that people will panic sell. That can happen in this world, in this shark ocean that we are traders within. 
know your factors like that. We swim in a sea of sharks and we need to know that and accept that and work with that. All right. Thank you so much for letting me share all this with you today. I really appreciate that. If you like the content of our videos, don't forget to take those paws and press that like button. And if you'd like to see all of Niffy Cat videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You can hit the notification bell so that you'll be shown all when all of his videos are released, when each of them are released. Yes, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate you very much. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. <laughs> Somebody is checking this out. Yes, he is. Nefertim says, what's this? What is this? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day.